Thoroughbred Action is presented by Hardacre Farm. Welcome to Thoroughbred Action from Gulfstream Park. I am Ron Nicoletti. It is Saturday, and what a great day. The start of the Florida Cyrus Stakes Series. Let's get right to those track and weather conditions. We start the afternoon with picture-perfect conditions for horse racing. Temperatures in the low 90s, a fast main track, a firm turf course, and a sunny sky for the first of 13 at six furlongs. Claimers in for a price tag of $6,250. Scratch the one, Nano's crown, field at seven. First race favorite was the five, Dancing Wind. Racing at Gulfstream. Toward the inside, Cowtown Spirit begins right on the money and establishes the lead from Punisher, who comes away in second. Playa Zaragoza's out of there racing in third. First race favorite, Dancing Wind, is fourth and two and a half lengths behind, working two ahead of Sol Flatara, then Cherie's win and two to the trailer, Scarlet Dell. They race down the backstretch and go to the half mile mark. Up front, the leader, Cowtown Spirit, a length and a quarter. Three wide out there is Playa Zaragoza in a joint second alongside Punisher. Dancing Wind is four wide around the far turn run, racing two ahead of Sol Flataro, who's three better than Cherie's win, and still trailing is Scarlet Dell. That's the seven of them with less than three furlongs to go. Three across the course now. Dancing win, three wide, two wide, Playa Zaragoza, Cowtown Spirit, holding firm at the rail with a quarter of a mile to go. They've worked four ahead of Sol Flataro and Cherie's win as they turn in. Cowtown Spirit confronted by Dancing Wind on the outside. Dancing Wind puts ahead in front. Cowtown Spirit boxing on valiantly toward the inside. Back to third, Cherie's win with Playa Zaragoza. Final first long. It's now Dancing Wind who strides to a clear lead. Cherie's Wind charging hard, but time is ticking away. Dancing Wind's almost there. Cherie's Wind lunging late. Dancing Wind wins. Dancing Wind prevails over Cherie's Wind second, third, Cowtown Spirit in 111 and 1. Number five, Dancing Wind takes care of business to kick off the Saturday program, giving jockey Amisael Jaramillo another summer victory for owner trainer Gilberto Zerpa. Seven, Cherie's Wind closed good ground to get second ahead of the two Cowtown Spirit who ran third. We move now to the second race, seven and a half furlongs over the turf and the start of the early pick four. $10,000 claimers took center stage. Scratch the eight, Wiza gone gray. The favorite was the nine, Terra. And they're off. Picture perfect beginning. Toward the inside, Fierce Tide gets the first call. Albert Charles is showing speed, market strength away in the top flight, and spun four wide to the first turn as Panamex, as inside position goes to Fierce Tide, who has a narrow lead. Racing on his outside is Zukov to be second ahead of Panamex and market strength third and fourth. Taro follows along fifth ahead of the gray master Jordan, who's two in front of Albert Charles and at the back of the field, Kentucky's tune. Around the first turn they go. Zukov takes it to the leader. Fierce Tide, and now Zukov is the leader. Fierce Tide is second. These two are going quickly through a 23 flat opening quarter. They've opened five now on third running market strength. Racing from fourth and about five lengths off the lead is Panamex, a length and a half in front of Taro. He's too clear of Master Jordan, who works too clear of Albert Charles, and trailing the field is still Kentucky's tune. They make their way past the half mile mark of the contest. Zukov wins the tussle with Fierce Tide, at least for the time being. Meanwhile, Taro got inside of market strength, has inside position and just took third. There's a run from Master Jordan. Master Jordan in the pink getting started three wide on the outside with three furlongs to go. Zukov has the lead. Fierce Tide's on the rebid. Master Jordan chimes into it three wide. Taro is fourth. He's down inside needing to improve from there, followed by market strength as they run to the top of the stretch. Up front, out in the center of the course, it's Master Jordan who comes away with the lead, but Zukov battles back, and these two shoulder to shoulder for the final eighth of a mile. Taro is third, Fierce Tide is fourth. Zukov inside, Master Jordan on the outside. Master Jordan surging and grinding away to a short lead. Master Jordan and Abby Medina will win it by a length and a half. Second Zukov, third Taro, fourth Albert Charles in 129 and two. Nice performance off a middle move for number one, Master Jordan, under jockey Abby Medina. Holds firm for the score for owner Jack Cannon and trainer Louis Dominguez. Number five, Zukov was bet down and kicked on well for second, ahead of the nine, Taro, who was best of the rest, while third. Time for a timeout. The Saturday card rolls on right after this. We have to take care of these horses that you know give us so much joy. Being accredited by the TAA gives us instant credibility. 
people trust us even more than they have before because they know that the TAA has been to all of our locations and that our horses are well cared for. I mean, this farm wouldn't look the way it is, these horses wouldn't look the way they are if it wasn't for the generosity and the hard work of Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance. They've united our whole industry in terms of the aftercare movement. And we're all working together for the same purpose. We're back now for the third race on the program at seven furlongs over the main track. Made in Clamors in for a price tag of $10,000. The field of nine, the favorite was the nine, Grand Venezuela. And they're off. Out wide, Grand Venezuelan gets the first call. Cottonall comes away with speed and will race in second. Up on the outside, Brave Request takes over third. Out the rail, Dandy Luis is marching forward. He comprises the top flight, working two ahead of Rachel's Warrior, then Whale and Sail ahead of Wild Little Kitten. The two at the back are long shots, Salute and Serve, and Cockeyed Festus. The race to the final half mile of the contest, and Jaramillo has Grand Venezuelan on the engine, leading Brave Request a length and a quarter. Third is Cottonall alongside Dandy Luis as Cottonall got shuffled a bit. Then it's Rachel's Warrior working two ahead of Whale and Sale. He's being asked to pick it up about seven lengths down through a 23-1 and one opening quarter. Around the far turn they go, three-eighths of a mile away. Grand Venezuelan leads by two. Brave Request second, Cottonall third. Fourth is Dandy Luis. Fifth is Rachel's Warrior. Then back at the inside, Wild Little Kitten, Whale and Sail not taking part as they move past the quarter mile pole. Grand Venezuelan lays down the gauntlet to the rest of the field, opens a six length lead now. Dandy Luis a bit hard to handle. Cotton all set down by Castillo, far outside in Rachel's Warrior. They're left in the wake of an even money choice, Grand Venezuelan. Grand Venezuelan comes inside the final furlong on a seven length lead now. Very good battle for second. Cotton All, Brave Request, Rachel's Warrior, even a late run from Wild Low Kitten. To the wire, Grand Venezuela in front. Rachel's Warrior second, third was Cotton All ahead of Brave Request in 124 and one. Betters knew what they were doing in today's third race. They hammered Grand Venezuelan, and he delivers the money and gives jockey Misael Jaramillo and trainer Gilberto Zerpa their second wins of the day. This one for the Orleana Farm. Number two, Rachel's Warrior gets up for second ahead of the three, Cottonall, who ran third. They moved out of the fourth race, seven furlongs over the main track, allowance optional claiming event. Claiming price here was 12,500. Field of nine signed on. The betters like the five, Noble Venezuela. And they're up. The favorite, Noble Venezuela, begins right on the money and establishes the early lead from Jaden's best and Blinding, who's away at the rail. Blinding now coming to challenge the favorite as they exit the shoot. Flemish Cap will set up shop third, working two ahead of Jaden's best, then comes in a swagger down inside Sunshine and Shadow, racing ahead of Rupp. He's four wide on the course, two in front of aces for John. And Papa Pig and Luca Panici drop back at the back of the pack, about 12 lengths off the lead through the opening quarter in just 22 and three. The race to the final half mile of the contest. Blinding and Jose Bautista lead narrowly. Noble Venezuela is on the rebid for Camacho racing in second. Sunshine and Shadow tacking on nicely third. Whip is out on Flemish Cap. Here's Rupp. Three wide and on the attack from fifth. Gap of two and a half to Inna Swagger. Then comes Aces for John. Jaden's best is plummeted to the back of the field. And Papa Pig tries to get a move on from the back of the pack through a 45 and one half mile. Noble Venezuela. Camacho takes a peek over his shoulder. He sees he has Sunshine and Shadow. Shadow to deal with. From the back in a swagger. Aces for John cuts the corner. Many chances here as they swing in. It's Noble Venezuela who has the lead. Sunshine and Shadow charging at him from second. Aces for John in full gear for Jose Cruz. He ducks to the inside. Final furlong. Four chances as Sunshine and Shadow surges to the lead. And he's the winner. It's Sunshine and Shadow by almost two in the end. Rupp got second. Third was Aces for John. Stanley Gold runs 1-2 one, and 1-23-1. One, and one. No trainer's been hotter than Stanley Gold over the last couple of weeks, and Amisa Al Jaramillo had the hot hand here today. They hook up to win race four with upset-minded Sunshine and Shadow. Son of Wildcat Air takes care of business for owner Michael Bernard. Stanley Gold runs second as well with number eight, Rupp, ahead of the three aces for John, who fired a big shot. He ran third. To the fifth race now, an allowance optional claiming event on the turf. One mile the trip, scraps the one, two, eight, and ten. Six left to go postward. The betters like the five, JoJo's Dream. They're up. My cowboy was a step slow. 
JoJo's dream was away well toward his inside, his global entry to go with him in the early stages. From the outside, My Cowboy recovers after a subpar beginning. Love conquers his between horses. It's a four-way go up front. They work two ahead of Devise, and the early trailer is Marco Mischief. Around the first turn they go, jockey Lionel Reyes had to throttle open to get My Cowboy over to the inside and on the top end. He leads it two and a half, though he's been hard used to get there. JoJo's Dream is second down at the inside. Global entry is a joint third alongside Love Conquers, working a length and a half clear of Devise, and Marco Mischief is last. They straighten for their backstretch run. They went opening, opening quarter in 23. And two up front. My Cowboy, a length and a quarter. JoJo's Dream as the favorite is poised to strike in second. Two back to Love Conquers third. Global Entry rides the rail in fourth, a length and a half better than Devise. And Marco Mischief continues at the back of the field. There's been no change in the plot through a 47 and one opening half mile. Less than half a mile to go. My Cowboy trying to go it all the way. Leads it by two. JoJo's Dream is second. Global Entry is third. He's in a bit tight. He just got shuffled to fourth as Love Conquers gets started three wide. From the back, Devise is given the green light with four lengths to raise, and Marco Mischief continues at the back of the field as they run to the top of the stretch. My Cowboy all in, but still ahead in front. JoJo's Dream is second, Love Conquers is third, Global Entry behind the top flight after three quarters and 111 flat. There's an eighth of a mile to go, and up front, My Cowboy digging in. Global Entry is stopped cold. Down the outside and coming on late is Devise. Here's Devise to get to Love Conquers. Inside and third is uh, my cowboy, Love Conquers, won it. Love Conquers and Miguel Vasquez get the money. Close after that, Devise charging hard in 134 and 4. Exciting stretch run in race number five. In the end, number seven, Love Conquers, much better to handle here today, and he gets the job done under jockey Miguel Vasquez from Monarch Stables and trainer Ron Spatz. Big late run from the six, Devise to get second. Ahead of the nine, my cowboy, he ran huge after missing the start. He ended up third. Early pick four, good for $325.65. The early pick five, $860.80. On now to race number six. These are two-year-old maidens of the special weight variety, racing for a $50,000 purse. They travel five and a half for long. Rider change on two, forever taken to Marcos Manessis. A heavy favorite was the second-time starter, number four, Draco. From the center, that's Reed Can who fires to the front. Draco comes away with speed. These two go on from Platinum Equity, who sets up shop third. Away racing in fourth is Sir Senescal. Then comes Jalen Hurts, working a length and a half in front of Forever Taken. The two at the back are City Edition and my brother Sledge. Past the half mile and moving to the far turn, Reed Can works three parts in front. Platinum Equity is second. Jaramillo reigns Draco back. He's third down toward the inside. Out wide on the course is Jalen Hurts. He's now only two lengths off the lead. In between horses is Sir Senescal. He needs some place to go. He appears to have horse, but no place to prove it, and the rest will have to get going as they run to the top of the stretch. With the lead, Reed can. He's 50 to 1. Can he keep it up? Aramio working Draco into the clear to try to go on the attack. Jalen Hurts spun out three wide as they turn in. Reed can with a two-length lead. Up into second now is Draco down the outside and Jalen Hurts, but with an eighth of a mile to go. Can Reed can. Reed can. He's 50 to 1. Reed can keeps finding on the front. Reed can and did under Carlos Montavo. He springs the shocker. Draco second, Jalen Hurts third, Sir Sinescal fourth in 104 and one. Hold on to your hats. How about a 50 to one bomber from the barn of Phil Combest? Number five, Reed Can shot right to the top and never looked back under Carlos Montavo, a Combest Racing Corporation. For Draco second ahead of the eight, Jalen Hurts, who was best of the rest, while wow, third. Time for a timeout. When we come back, the Saturday card continues right after this. A passion for horses and a commitment to breed champions is the foundation of Hardacre Farm. Founded in 1999 by Amy Tarrant, owner, breeder, and trainer, Hardacre Farm, now based in Ocala, continues its tradition of success. From the Breeders' Cup to Gulfstream Park, Hardacre Farm, from the breeding shed to the racetrack, in pursuit of producing the best. Back for the seventh race now, seven and a half furlongs over the turf, mating claimers in for a tri price tag of 12,500. Scratch the four, 13, 14, and 16. The 15 gets in. The favorites were the two, Susu's Kitten, and the eight, Trip the Queen. They're off. Good beginning. 
From between horses, Love Totem gets the first call. Easter Act is away with speed. These two go on from the outside. That's Sweet Point and Down the Shore who come away in the top flight as they race to the first turn. Up front, the leader, Love Totem, just narrowly toward the inside. Easter Act is second on the outside. Down the Shore is now third. Working between horses and taking over fourth is the comebacker, Trip the Queen. She's now only two lengths behind for C.J. McMahon. Out on her outside is Sweet Point, but she's got the luck down toward the inside. Followed by Susu's Kitten, the favorite is mid-flight about five lengths off the lead, working three ahead of Spring Hollow, who's racing a length better than Selfie Sensation. She's a length and a half in front of the team of Channeled to Win and Serenity Moon. And at the back of the field, the trailer is JP Calling. Down the back stretch they go. The opening quarter pretty quick. 23 and 1. There's less than half a mile to go in the race. The move being made here is Susu's Kitten, who's just trying to secure position between horses as Easter Act now moved three wide. Getting the shuffle in that scenario was Trip the Queen. She's now lost a bit of ground, and she's coming around horses four wide and on the attack. As they round the far turn, the leader is down the shore by two. Easter Act is second. Trip the Queen is next. Susu's Kitten between horses continues to march forward, and Susu's Kitten will now guide to the outside side here under jockey Luca Panici. That didn't help trip the Queen's cause at all as they turn for home. Susu's kitten keyed up, ready to roll, and now she takes over the lead. Easter Act is second. Here's a late run and a good late run from Serenity Moon. Final furlong, Susu's kitten strides to the lead. Serenity Moon is coming on. She's got the luck in Easter Act, but Susu's kitten coming clear. She had to negotiate traffic, but she did and kicked on. Susu's kitten by three. Close for second. Easter Act or Serenity Moon. She's got the luck. Ran fourth at 1.30 and 2. Great turf trip here from jockey Luca Panici, who was outside, inside, and then back outside under Susu's kitten. And she did the rest as she kicked on for a game victory for owner-trainer Chad Stewart. Dead heat for second between five Serenity Moon and six Easter Act. We move now to the eighth race on the program. Today's eighth race at six and a half furlongs over the main track. Claimers in for a price tag of $6,250. Late scratch of three American Phantom. Also scratch the five, six, and nine. Race time favorites were two, La Cavalion, and eight, Taverny Bay. And they're off. Taverny Bay begins nicely. So does Datsardi's boy, Tranquil Warrior. And here's Brookside being sent along. Sabayos is offensive-minded with Brookside, but he'll have to land second as Datsardi's boy is the speed of the speed. It's Datsardi's boy in front by a length. Brookside is second. Tranquil Warrior is third. Taverny Bay under Manessis is racing from fourth ahead of Daddy Duke in fifth. Gap of three to River Running. And La Caballion on the turn back is last of all through a 22-4 and four opening quarter. The race to the half and final half mile of the contest. And from the outside, Side. The leader is still Datsardi's boy, a half a length in front of Tranquil Warrior, who's on the outside second. Brookside is down inside third, but Daddy Duke goes up and by him as Brookside will have to wait for a way through. So will Taverny Bay. He's fifth while under restraint. He's got no place to go. Like a Bowian begins to rally from the back, and River Running has not played a part as they run to the top of the stretch. They went 46 seconds for the opening half mile, and there's a quarter of a mile left to go. And taking over the lead, Tranquil Warrior comes off the turn with a length and a half cushion. Brookside now into the clear and trying to get to the leader down the outside in Laka Bowian. Taverny Bay wanders between horses. Final furlong. Tranquil Warrior trying to hold off Brookside. Brookside and Tranquil Warrior. Tranquil Warrior's digging in. Brookside with a late push on the outside. It's Tranquil Warrior. It's Brookside. Tranquil Warrior. Tranquil Warrior held on to win it from Brookside second, then Laka Bowian and Taverny Bay in 117 and 4. Nice performance today from the seven-year-old son of Gotcha Gold. Number 10, Tranquil Warrior gets the head start on everybody else and holds on for the victory. The trainer, Jennifer Quinones, and owner, Faustino Hernandez, Roberto Alvarado Jr. on board for the winning ride. Number one, Brookside, got a good trip. He shook loose but just couldn't outrun the leader. He ended up second ahead of number two, La Caballion, who ran third. Finishing fourth was the eighth, Taverny Bay. On out of the ninth race, the ninth race, first leg of the late pick five, five furlongs over the turf, scratch the 12, little meatball. Field of 11 signed on. These reclaimers in for a price tag of 10,000. That was a wide open running race. And they're off. From between horses, that's Bill's Passion, who springs out to head for the year of the lead. More Mia comes away in second. On your mock is on the outside with Swagger and Awesome My Way. Then it's a length and a half back to the rail and Bone Town Wild. He's racing about six lengths off the pace setter. Stable for between horses. Ginger Goose is three wide. At the back of the field is Biggest Little City as they swing to the far turn. Loose up top, Bill's Passion and the hot-handed Haramio calling the shots with a three-length lead. Racing in second is More Mia. He's trying to target the leader. Three 
back to the inside and Swagger third. Then Awesome My Way, Stableford finds his best ride and comes on next. That's all for On Your Mock. Texas Rustler is out wide as they swing in. Bill's Passion only has a length and a half to work with as Mormia takes dead aim on the outside. Second, Swagger is back to third and he's coming on a bit. Final furlong, Bill's Passion trying to see it through on the outside and Mormia is going to take a late lunge, but Bill pa Bill's Passion is still there. They can't reach him. Bill's Passion will put it. Mormia second, very close for third. We'll give it to Bone Town Wild ahead of Swagger in 55 and 2. Number five, Bill's Passion supplies jockey Amisai Al Haramio with his fourth winner of the afternoon as he goes all the way. Very quick indeed under jo jockey Amisai Al Haramio for Armando de la Cerda and Midwest Thoroughbreds. Six, Mormia had every opportunity but could not get by while second ahead of the one Bone Town Wild who ran third. To the 10th race and the start of the late pick four, six furlongs of the journey. Fading claimers in for a price tag of $10,000. Scratch the three, six, 10, and 11. 15, Jenna Don make the jockey Alvaro Donis. Favorites included 14, Sassy Slew, and five, Kinahora. Picky, picky girl and sassy slew, the first two to begin. Here's Kinahora, the favorite is up to challenge. These three across the track. Miley's Pride joins the party from down toward the inside. It's a length and a half back to great try mid-flight today with Riverinas on her outside. Widest of all is Jenna Dawn. Then it's the team of Dragon Rouge and Peaceful Warrior Girl working ahead of Yono Fue and Mizzen My Honeyboon is last of all as they speed to the far turn. Hammered to four to five. It's Kinahora and Luca Panici on top of length and a quarter. Miley's Pride is second on the outside. Side third is going picky picky girl sassy slew fourth back to fifth and riverina sixth inside great try trying to run on from the back is peaceful warrior girl then to the outside and jenna dawn backing away dragon rouge as they run to the top of the stretch ken ahora has the lead she'll have to hold off some closers miley's pride up and on the outside riverina throws her hat into the ring and in fact riverina is doing the better work here's riverina at nine to one up for the lead ken is all in trying to hold on to second then sassy slew riverina wanders way out to the center Center here. Riverina has the lead. She's on top by a length and a quarter, but now she starts to feel the strain, and Sassy Slew takes advantage. Here's Sassy Slew to take on Riverina, who beat herself. Sassy Slew a length and a half. Riverina second. Peaceful Warrior Girl got up for third in 112 and two. Number 12, Riverina flat out gave the race to the 14, Sassy Slew, as Riverina took, to, took the lead and drifted badly, allowing Sassy Slew to re-rally up the inside and get the money for owner-trainer Jose Pension and winning rider Edgar Zayas. 12, Riverina was second, ahead of the one peaceful warrior girl who ran third, but favorite did not fire Kinahora back away. On to the 11th race now, six furlongs to journey. This was the co-feature race of the day, the Desert Vixen Division of the FTBOA Florida Sire Stakes. Two-year-old fillies went postward, a field of eight. The favorite was the three, Awesome Mass. And they're off in the FTBOA Florida Sire Stakes Desert Vixen. From the outside, Go Astray gets the first call from between horses, Valid Interest. Right on is down at the rail. In the two path is Pantyhose. These four line up. Awesome Mass is now improving for Haramil, racing in the three path and all the way up into third, followed by Starship Modina. Then comes I Want to Talk About Me, and the trailer is sitting on Cotton. They speed past the half mile and take it to the far turn. The opening quarter was solid, 22 and one. Three furlongs left to go with Go Astray taking over the lead. Awesome Mass moves to her while second. Back to third is Valid Valid interest, pantyhose is between horses, Starship Bonita. She gets started three wide for Ramsey Zimmerman, a gap of two more to right on. And the laggards at the back, I want to talk about me and sitting on Cotton with a quarter of a mile left to go. Go Astray has the lead. The whip is out on Awesome Mass. She's second, but she's not going on. Down the outside and Starship Bonita. Pantyhose is up the rail as Go Astray cuts the corner and opens a five length lead now. The battle's on for second on the outside. Starship Bonita to the inside, Awesome Mass. Pantyhose is out the rail, then right on but through it all give it to the daughter of gone astray go astray and jose bautista all the way very close for second too close to call between awesome mass and pantyhose then starship bonita and right on upset winner of today's desert fiction number seven go astray is the speed of the speed and forgets to stop bringing a 10 to 1 upset under jose bautista for angel rodriguez and owner ramiro medina three awesome mass second five pantyhose round third Time for a timeout. The Leap Daily Double is up next. Race number 12, the Dr. Fager, right after this.
Crossing the finish line for the last time can mean an uncertain future for many horses. Recognizing the need for a dignified retirement, the racing industry has made racehorse aftercare a top priority. In partnership with Gulfstream Park and the Florida Horsemen's Association, Florida Track provides retraining and adoption services for retired racehorses. Thanks to their efforts, the end of a racing career can signal the beginning of a new career. In show jumping, trail riding, police work, even therapy for children and veterans. However, good intentions do not come without cost. As a nonprofit organization, Florida Track relies on tax-deductible donations and volunteers to help pay for feed, training, housing, and veterinary care. To find out how you can help, contact Florida Track today. Your support will go a long way towards a new beginning. Back now for race number 12, the 36th running of the FTBOA Florida Sire Stakes, Dr. Fager Division. $100,000 up for grabs through the two-year-old Colton Gelling. Scratch number five, Dr. Chat. Field of seven, favorites were four, Phantom Row, and seven, Dunk. And they're off in the Dr. Fager. Little Doubt wins the start. Majestic Secret is quick, and Dunk is away well from an outside gate. Punching between horses is the gray Phantom Row. Phantom Row and Zayas put ahead in front. Majestic Secret is second, and Dunk will watch the action unfold from third, a length behind. Then it's two back to Sutash, who's now racing in fourth ahead of Little Doubt. In tight is Tip Sheet, and at the inside, Kingston Pike. They pass the half-mile pole and swing to the far turn. Three wide, Dunk is on the attack. And from between horses, Phantom Row, Majestic Secret holds firm at the rail. Sutash and Jorge Ruiz very much in, in range here, only two lengths behind. These top four will decide it as they pulled readily clear of the others with less than five sixteenths to go. Phantom Row goes on, Dunk right alongside. Three wide and Sutash. Majestic Secret the first to back away from the top duel as they turn for home. Three chances here, but Phantom Row cuts the corner and maintains the lead. Zayas goes to work at the eighth pole and strides to a two-length lead. Dunk is all in, not finding down the outside and Sutash. Majestic Majestic Secret will be fourth, but up front it's Phantom Row. Phantom Row strong here for Edgar Zayas and the son of Wildcat Arrow win it by two in the end. Dunk was second, got close for third. Majestic Secret re-rallies on the outside of Sutaj. Game performance here today from number four, Phantom Row, who took a licking and kept on ticking, giving Edgar Zayas his second winner of the day. This one for Ralph Nix and Roroma Stable. Seven Dunk, no excuse while second, ahead of the eight Sutaj, who ran third. Thirteenth and final race over the turf at seven and a half furlongs, made in claimers, and for a price tag of twelve thousand five hundred. Scratch the three, five, ten, thirteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Rider change on seven. El Genio to jockey Raul Mena. Race time favorite was the four Indian Scout. And runners away. At wide, Love You Lots gets the first call. El Genio sent along by Raul Mena, moving out the rail. That's Indian Scout with one classy dude alongside. These four across the course as they run around the first turn. Away racing in fifth is Grand Saman from down toward the rail. He's only about four lengths behind under Panici, and he's a length better than the gray Sarastro, who's mid-flight. Then it's another length and a half to outside and a half gray. Racing fourth last, third last inside is Go Harley Go. Second last is Scarlet Wine, and the trailer don't knock it. To the backstretch, they rumble now. And up front, El Genio has an early tussle here with one classy dude through the opening quarter in 22 and 4. Indian Scout watching the action unfold from three lengths off the pace setter and racing in third, a length ahead of Grand Saman fourth. And back to Sarastro and Love You Lots. Half Gray is next, working three clear of Go, Harley. Go. He'll have to go soon. He's dropped better than 10 lengths behind. Second last is Scarlet Wine, and Don't Knock It continues last of all as they swing around the far turn. Don't Knock It starts to hit his best stride. El Genio has the lead Indian Scout second. Grand Saman on the outside now, third and moving in. One classy dude calls it an afternoon, passed outside by Sarastro. Half Gray had to tape a tap on the brakes. Love You Lots is not going on with it. Then comes Don't Knock It. Love You Lots is veering to the far outside and being eased at the back as they turn in. Indian Scout, he has one to deal with. Grand Saman and Panici on the outside. These two well clear of the others, less than an eighth of a mile to go. Indian Scout by two. Grand Saman starts to motor now. Here's Grand Grand Samani shifted in, didn't do himself any favors, but he still might have Indian Scout, he does. Grand Saman is in time. Indian Scout second, Sarastro third, don't knock it from last to fourth, ahead of Scarlet Wine in fifth in 129 and four. 
Number four Indian scout had one to fight off, turning for home, and could not fight off that rival. It was the one Grand Saman who rallied to get the money, giving Luca Panici his second winner of the day for OMG Stables and trainer Oscar Gonzalez. Number four Indian scout ran well, but could only settle for second. The late pick five, good for $5,012 and 75 cents. He did have some winners in the Rainbow Six. 20 cent return, $16,873.68. Triggers a Sunday carryover of $53,659.39. And that wraps up Saturday's card. Remember, on Sunday, 12 races, but what an exciting day. The return of Fountain of Youth winner Guna Vera, which will be race number four on the 12 race card. Good night, good luck. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. What do you say? Let me tell you, Jack, I'm so tired.